Hello, and welcome to Portland State University's CTF Walkthrough channel. This is the walkthrough for Bash Loop. We found a program that is hiding a flag but requires you to guess the number it is thinking of. Chances are Linux has an easy way to try all the numbers. Go to this path and try it out. Here is the hint. So first, let's CD to the path they give us and see what we're up against. So ls, see what files are here. There are only two files. There is an executable called bash loop and a file called flag. Uh, now the file, uh, you don't have read access to the uh, file flag, so you can't just cat flag to see what's in there and, you know, complete the challenge like that. Uh, it's not that easy. So I assume this means we'll have to go through the bash loop to reach the flag, uh, like actually solving the challenge, you know? So let's run the bash loop and see... Uh, what it may, has us do. So uh, it makes us guess its number, which is between 0 and 4096. Now, the fact that the program terminated right away implies to me that it needs arguments. So while most programs, when you run them, uh, they then wait for user input after while being run, uh, programs like these need arguments before being run. So right now, I would have to give it, say, the number 1 before being run. So this should mean the program would try the number one as my guess. And it says, nope, it doesn't work. Let's try two, doesn't work. Let's try three, four, uh, you get the point. So I guess there's two ways to solve this problem. You could plug all the numbers in and you'll eventually get it. Or you could be a programmer and be lazy and actually solve it the way it's intended to be solved. So let's be lazy. So the, uh, the problem statement hints that you should use a bash loop. So bash loops um, are part of shell scripting. So shell scripting is the code that you can write within a shell, like the one I am currently on. Uh, you could write it just straight out, write it in here. Like you could put in a for loop here and write it like program. But I prefer to put my code inside a .sh file. So let's make a .sh file here using Emacs because um, Emacs is the superior text editor. So I've created my batch loop.sh, and I'm going to start writing stuff, uh, but I can't because it is, uh, I don't have write access in this directory. So that means we'll have to go back to our home directory, which is the only place you can actually make things that you have write and write access to. So let's make Emacs batch loop. .sh. Let's make the batch loop uh, .sh file again. Now we can write our code. So if you don't know how to do shell scripting, uh, I suggest that you pause this video and go Google uh, some shell scripting tutorials. You just need the basics, like how to actually write the file. OK, so uh, I'm going to write my shell script. Uh, my first line, my first line, I must define uh, what program is being called to run my shell script, in this case, it would be, uh, it'd be at slash bin slash bash. And then I can actually uh, write the program itself. I will use a very basic for loop for i in uh, 0 to, let's start with 3. So in case something goes wrong, our computer doesn't crash. So this would for loop through the number 0 to 3. Then I put a do and a done at the end. So then this for loop performs the actions between the do and done uh, for every i between 0 to 3. So if I was to say, make it echo hello, then uh, this would make it echo hello four times because, uh, because 0 to 3. Inclusive, that is. But I don't want it to echo hello. I want it to actually uh, make guesses at the number. So I would need to call the program that we're doing, which would be at this path. loop, and this would run the executable with this argument, an argument of i, uh, the variable i. That's why I have to put the dollar sign. If I don't put the dollar sign, then the program will read it literally as the argument is the letter i. I don't want the character i. I want the variable i, which will be a number be between 0 and 3. So this should work. Now if we try running it. 
Oh, we can't run it yet. We have to chmod to change uh, the permissions so that we actually have permission to run it. If you don't know what chmod is, you should probably Google it or read its manual page. So chmod, now I can execute it. Let's execute it. Okay, we seem to have run into some technical difficulties. Um, look at this again. Ah, uh, okay. So I missed the uh, forward slash there. You need to have the forward slash there so that uh, the program finds this path starting from uh, the root. If you don't have that, then it's going to look from where you currently are. So if I don't have the forward slash there, that'd be a relative path. So within my current directory, it would look for a directory called problems and then that jumble of letters. And since that doesn't exist, it would crash. But if I put that forward slash, it starts looking from the root, which is like the outermost directory of the computer. And from there, it can find the problems di directory and find everything else. Now it should work. So yes, uh, the program ran four times. The batch loop program, uh, we we managed to call the batch loop program, program four times on the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. And clearly, they are all wrong. Um, so let's do a few more numbers then. Instead of just 0 to 3, let's try 0 to 100. Uh, they're all nope as well. Uh, at this point, you might be thinking, if we do 4096, won't this take up too much space and it'll take a long time to search through? And you are completely correct. Uh, so what we can do is we can use grep uh, which searches for output that matches a certain format. Uh, we can use that to filter our response. So let's go back in there first and change it to 4096 instead of just 100. So now it will be guessing everything. But this time, instead of just directly calling it, we also need to pipe that into the grep function. So grep flag, which means it will filter out any line that doesn't have the word flag in it. And my guess is that uh, the line that does have flag will have the word flag in it, saying like, here's the flag kind of thing. So let's grep for flag, see if we get anything. And yep, we got something. And the challenge is complete.